Are you watching this chained to your desk, dreaming of another working life? You're not alone. Many of us daydream about switching careers, but few are brave enough to do it. I want to know what it's like to leave a well-paid career in finance to try to turn a well-loved hobby into a stable job. I'm Rennie, I'm uh, 52 years old. I come from a small town in Germany near Frankfurt. I used to work in the financial industry for more than 30 years and I have recently changed my career to something completely different. I'm now a costume designer and maker. The story of Rennie's working life starts in the currency markets of Frankfurt. As a teenager, she'd been interested in studying fashion design, but her parents encouraged her to pursue a career in finance, a sensible job with a good salary. These are pre-programmed buttons, um, phone numbers from other banks that you could quickly call out. She later took a job at Deutsche Börse in London, but her love of costume design never went away. So she took a series of classes outside office hours, developing skills such as corset making. One of her tutors worked at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts and encouraged Rennie to apply. So she went along to one of Rada's open days. I was absolutely gobsmacked. I think they have about 25,000 uh, different items in their costume store. And of course, the costume workroom. You say you were gobsmacked. Did you know this was the place that you wanted to be? This was the place I ever dreamt of. I thought, I have to do this, because I always had it in the back of my head to start studying at some point again. So I've always set aside money. That's what Germans do. We're raised to save our money uh, for a purpose. Rada only takes four people onto their postgraduate costume design course, and Rennie didn't fancy her chances of getting in. I couldn't think why they would uh, choose someone mature um, coming from the financial industry. But she was wrong. She was accepted onto the course. Then she had a big decision to make. I've been doing my job, my previous job, long enough that it got a bit too routine and um, there was this longing for so doing something new. Did you hand in your notice straight away? I discussed it, of course, with my husband. My husband said to me, I'd be really disappointed if you didn't take that offer. I said, yeah, that's it. I'm going to take it. A partner's support can be vital, particularly if your job switch means a cut in salary. I didn't seek any advice other than discussing it with my husband. Didn't talk to my parents, for example, about it because I knew the answer. What was their reaction? <laughs> my mum was uh, quite shocked. How can you give up such a well-paid job? That's just mad. Sky Robertson helps disillusioned professionals find work they really love. She advises testing your dream job before handing in your notice. Sometimes a hobby is best kept as a hobby. Sometimes it will make a good career or, um, or a business, but it needs to be like stress tested. Is this something that I want to spend every single day working on and taking some time actually doing that as a practice round before committing to doing that? all the time. I'm very much of the opinion of the try before you buy approach. So whether it's shadowing somebody, volunteering, um, if it's taking a week off of work so that you can try what would a week of doing this feel like. People have this romantic vision of what something might look like, but the worst thing is spending lots of time and energy trying to get there and then realizing it's just the same stuff in a different place, um, the same things they don't like. Rennie finished her two-year postgraduate course at RADA last summer. But going from the relative security of regular salaries and bonuses to freelance work and reduced earnings has been a big leap. I'm writing applications and I don't get replies. And I find that uh, very difficult. I think I'm, I'm not getting um, the offers that my younger peers uh, are getting. So Rennie's had to overhaul her CV to compete with younger peers for paid gigs. I've done um, project management and things like that. I think for a costume job, that's really valuable. So I have left it in my CV and in the beginning. Now I have cut it all off and just uh, stripped my CV down to a pure, well, graduate student of costume. And uh, the only date I still have left in is uh, when I did my um, original degree in banking 
and that might get chucked out with the next <laughs> round of CVs I'm sending. So if you're in your 50s and thinking about switching careers, removing your age from your CV could make you more competitive. Very happy where I am and uh, with the jobs that, that I'm getting, I just could be getting more jobs, I think. <laughs> the best thing is definitely when I get to make um, elaborate costumes. I love that. Yeah, I love sourcing the fabrics, giving design ideas for decoration and the little details that we could put onto a costume. I love discussing that with the clients and then making it. I would like to go from one job into the next one and on relatively easily. I would like to be in that circle of, oh, Rennie, are you free to do this? And yeah, I'm free to do this. Fantastic. Um, but I'm not quite there yet. Do you have minimum orders? On uh, our minimum is 10 centimeters, which is quite a small amount. It's <laughs> yeah. just barely enough for a collar. Business psychologist Lucy Standing says you have to make sure your expectations are realistic. You're going to have to work really, really hard. You're going to have to be incredibly resilient and you're going to have to suck up a lot of rejection because that's the reality of what it takes. There isn't a job with your dreams. There's a job where it's hard work, it's effort. I mean, work is called work for a reason, all right? It's not about just having fun every single day. It's about pain and suffering and rejection because actually the reward that you get and the feeling of enjoyment that you get from any job that you like, the feeling of love is directly equivalent to the time and the investment that you put in to get there. Rennie didn't always have blue hair. Her new look came after she left banking. She has no regrets about making the switch, but she misses the social side of her old job. It can be really lonesome to sit on your own in, in a studio. Rennie stays in touch with her old friends from Deutsche Börse. She even makes hats for some of them. And I really love it. <laughs> Did you see that, Stuart? No, I've seen it. You Look at this. Just... This is absolutely amazing hat. And some of her former colleagues really envy her for what she's I really done. Love the a lot of people um, secretly think, yeah, I'd really like to do that. I'd really like to do something, <laughs> like to make my hobby um, my profession. But it's also the question, how much money do they need? Uh, of course, the younger generation needs a lot more money because if they've bought a house, they will have a massive mortgage. It's quite a substantial amount of money that um, you're losing by not working in the financial industry anymore. And a lot of people have gotten used to this sort of money with their lifestyle. They travel a lot. This is, of course, not something you can do when you are um, studying or then afterwards working in, in a profession that is really, really poorly paid. In order to turn a passion into a hobby, you have to seriously consider if you can afford to take the leap. Bankers at the very start of their careers make upwards of 30 to 40,000 pounds, but Rennie's commissions have so far only earned her the minimum wage, just under eight pounds an hour. You really have to have a passion for it to ditch a well-paid job and go into costume instead. So if you didn't get any paid work, how long could you survive on your savings? So how much money do you think you should save to make a break? Two years to be comfortable. If you, if you cannot find jobs in an area after two years. It's not going to happen now if it uh, hasn't happened in the past two years, despite all the effort. So I've given myself that time. There's also a real danger that you can fall out of love with your hobby if you try to turn it into a full-time career. Being a child of the 80s, we used to make a lot of stuff ourselves. Your passion in your mind, something that you use to divert you from your day job, is not necessarily the same as then doing it full time. When you suddenly have to make money from it, when you suddenly have to do it not for pleasure but for income, then actually the drivers and the motivation behind it change entirely. It's often a big disappointment for people. Rennie insists she has no regrets, but she has some sage advice for anyone considering making a similar move. Make a plan about your finances because you have to be really, really clear that you can afford it. You also have to bear in mind that there is a lot of weekend work involved with theatre and film. I quite enjoy the freedom I've got, but I have to say the self-employment is really only working because I can afford it. Because of my savings, um, my co-student, she, they basically have to take on every job they get. Yeah, one of my friends said to me, yeah, if, if I 
can't find anything, I might have to work at McDonald's because I need to pay my rent. Ultimately, making a move like this isn't about getting rich. You might have to decide between money and purpose. There's lots of evidence in, in psychology that people who love what they do, do better in the long term. They are able to have better relationships, they are less likely to get divorced, that all of these things are true. People actually like what they do and that actually there's a cap of when money stops buying you happiness. You know, it's something like 60 grand or something and actually above that people aren't considerably, it's like the percentage wise is very, only very slight. Rennie says she feels better, she sleeps better, and even her blood pressure has gone down. Her husband reckons she seems happier, and friends think making the move has taken 10 years off her. But my ultimate goal would be working on a fantasy TV series or film with a lot of um, really weird costumes where you can put uh, a lot of ideas, design ideas in and uh, create something. You probably quite a rocky road um, to get there. Do you ever anticipate going back to financial services? Not really. Never say never, only on a project basis, never um, the full time employment anymore. So, if you're in a well paid job like banking, but you've got itchy feet and are thinking about following your dream, consider the following get your finances in order. There's a good chance you'll have to live off savings for a while. Test your idea, try it out before you take the plunge. Be prepared to fall out of love with your hobby. It may not be quite as much fun when you start doing it full time. And develop thick skin. You may have to learn how to handle rejection before the job offers start rolling in.